All the highs and lows, adrenaline and heartache of the 2013 Total Rally is brought to you by Motorsport South Africa and its partners, Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen and Sassol. Welcome to a new day, a new dawn for rallying in South Africa. This is the first event of the 2013 season sponsored by Total and run on the fearsome dirt roads to the south of Durban. With vast tunnels of sugarcane lining the stages and bits of loose rock known as marbles that turn traction into nothing more than hope, this event usually separates the talented from those who should have done more testing in the off-season. This is the South African National Rally Championship and what you're looking at is the first instalment in an eight-part opera that will see one man rise above his peers to be crowned Champion Driver of the Year and boss in the subsequent glory. But the journey to the final event is one fraught with danger and challenges. And like Frodo delivering the ring to Mordor, it will take a Herculean effort of will and skill to triumph. Last season saw veteran Craig Trott, with Robbie Kutsir beside him in the Team Total Toyota Runex, take the honours. Mainly thanks to a calculated season where Trott valued points above podiums. But 2013 promises to change the game forever as a platoon of young guns line up to rain on the old Foxes parade. I've probably got an advantage experience-wise, but yeah, having a, a fairly new navigator, pretty much a, a novice. We've only spent one day together. Trot's nearest competitor in 2012 was Ashley Haig-Smith in the Castrol-supported Ford Fiesta R2. Remember that we're talking here about the S1600 class, South Africa's premier class for front-wheel drive cars with engine capacities of no more than 1600cc. Haig Smith was paired with various navigators during the season, which didn't help his cause at all. Towards the end of the season, however, he was joined by Welshman Craig Parry, and the pair settled into an easy and fast rhythm that almost gave them the championship. In 2013, the team will be going all out to claim the top step of the podium on as many races as possible, but they won't be alone. Yeah, new challenge, um, new goals, new opportunities. Basically, we're just going to come here and hopefully we can do a clean sweep and continue from the end of last year. Uh, Craig and Russ Craig now permanently based here in South Africa and trying to help me develop for the overseas. Also joining the fray is Guy Bottrell and navigator Simon Vasey Lyle in the Yato Tools sponsor Toyota Run X. This pair has shown remarkable pace in the past, but didn't quite manage to bring the fight to Trot and Hague Smith during 2012. With Haig Smith again running an R2 spec car in 2013 and more of these quick machines joining the starting grid, Bottrell and Vasey Lyle will have their hands full this year. Other notable entrants in S1600 for 2013 include Clint Weston, now paired with navigator Christoph Snaidert in the Reef Tanker Citroen C2 R2. Weston has been making steady progress in the Citroen, winning one event in 2012 and mounting a late mock charge for the championship. And with former driver champion Snaidert next to him, Weston should be one to watch this season. Another notable entry is that of former track racer Chad van Buurden and Henry Deerlove beside him in a Volkswagen Polo, while Richard Leek III and navigator Pierre Jordan also joined the battle in a Ford Fiesta R2. Interestingly, a number of former S1600 competitors have made the move to the Class S2000 despite finishing down the order in that Class S1600 last year. These include Nick van der Bestuizen, who has handed down his SA Earthworks supported full Fiesta R2 to his parents, and Stefani Buerta, who's traded her team total Toyota S1600 for a spot in the big league, still with dad Willem Yuchu beside her. A new entry in Class S1600 is son of Namibian rally legend Richard Himmel, Tylo, who is campaigning a Ford Fiesta this year with experienced navigator Armand de Toy beside him. 
Himmel is just one of our host of Namibian entries in Class S1600, with Chris Kurze and Robbie Kutsia both running South African built Toyota Etios R2 cars. Megan and Oliver Verlag find themselves in a Toyota Corolla for 2013, while Paul Franken and Henry Kern campaign a Volkswagen Polo. Those are the crews and this is the battlefield. A series of stages grouped south of Durban, featuring sugarcane, marbles and a mass of unpredictable corners, jumps and very quick sections. Exactly the type of terrain that will make the boys wish they were men and the men wish they were home. And talking of boys, at the head of the field you'll find the big boys of the South African National Championship. The men and one woman who compete in class S2000, the top class in South African rally, which features four-wheel drive cars similar to those found on the World Rally Championship. The defending champion is Mark Ronier, who has lost his sponsor, but is now supported by Ford South Africa's dealer network. He had Team Castrol Toyota's Johnny Gemmel breathing down his neck all of last season, and the two are sure to be slugging it out for top honours yet again. But the game has changed a bit for Gemmel, who is now equipped with a brand new Toyota Yaris S2000. Lighter and faster than its predecessor, yes, but new cars always have teething problems. And teething problems are what held back the BP Volkswagen team last year. This time round, they've gained Sassel as a sponsor, and their cars should be sorted, giving the likes of Harkin Fekken and Enzo Kuhn a fair shot at the title themselves. Joining the team is young gun Henk Latechan, who impressed in a privateer S2000 during 2012 and is sure to make his mark in the championship this year. One man who already has a couple of championships under his belt is Jan Habech, who is again campaigning a Basel Reed-supported Ford Fiesta S2000. Those are some of the key players who lined up for Stage 1 on the south coast of KwaZulu-Natal on March the 8th. And when the lights went green, it was as though there hadn't even been an off-season. Defending champion Marc Cronier shot straight into a lead which he never relinquished, stamping his authority on the championship from the get-go and claiming first blood in this year's campaign. Quite the opposite was true for former champion Harkin Fekken, paired with Pierre Aris in the Sassol Volkswagen Polo. The pair barely made it 600 metres into the first stage before rolling well out of the event. There was heartache too for Johnny Gemmel, whose brand new Castrol Toyota Yaris caught a light in stage four, ending the Gauteng's pre-season hopes of an early victory. Initially, it was Sassel Volkswagen's Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson who kept Cronier honest, but the pair had a massive crash at the end of stage three, ending their charge and completely destroying the polo in the process. What followed was a ping-pong battle for second and third, with Jan Hobbich and Robert Paisley in the Basel Reed Ford slugging it out with a host of challenges. By the time the dust had settled, it was Team Total's JP Damso, with navigator Hilton all free, who slotted into third, with Habich claiming the second step of the podium behind Cronier and navigator Robin Houghton. Behind the S2000 crews, the men and women in Class S1600 were chomping at the bit to get their season underway. One man who was ready to make his presence felt was Guy Bottrell, who always felt on the edge of making a move on the championship last year. Together with navigator Simon Vasey Lyle, Bottrell attacked from the word go, posting a stage one time of 10 minutes 33.9 seconds, quick enough to draw first blood on the total rally. His time was a full eight seconds faster than the next quickest on stage two, a time achieved by Tylo Himmel and Armand de Toy in their brand new Toyota Etios R2. This was the first outing for Himmel and the Etios, but the car looked well poised and ready to attack. Ashley Haig-Smith and Craig Perry in their Castrol-sponsored Ford Fiesta R2 came through a couple of seconds slower than Himmel, but still quick enough to claim the third fastest time. Remember, these crews have significantly more grip, thanks to the sweeping duties performed by the big guns up front. Even so, making the most of that grip remains a challenge. The challenge of finding grip, however, was clearly relished by Bottrell. His time was 7.5 seconds faster than that of Himmel, who in turn pipped Haig Smith by 8.7 seconds. Matthew Basie Lyle and Skunk van Heerden were next fastest in their Toyota Runex, with defending class champion Craig Trott posting the fifth fastest time. 
Mike Megan and Oliver Villarque in their VW Polo were up next, followed by Richard Leake and Pierre Jordan. After a quick visit to the Dunlop service park to repair any first stage damage, the crews headed out towards the stages known as Drum Durrick and Inverneti. Stages 2 and 3 together represented just over 21 kilometres of special stage rallying through some of the tallest sugarcane on the planet. Or so it seemed from behind the wheel as the cane closed in like a tunnel at high speed. Not that the tall sugarcane seemed to deter Bottrell at all. The youngster simply plied on the power and the pressure and again went fastest through the stage. This time he pipped Himmel by four seconds extending his lead to a healthy 15 seconds after two stages. He stumbled a wee bit in stage three, however, as the reef tanker Citroen C2 R2 driver Clint Weston, with navigator Christoph Snyder, fired a warning salvo at the flying bottle. Weston showed significant pace during 2012, even winning one event. But so far, he'd been running down the order somewhat due to a fuel pump problem, until exiting stage three, that was. His time didn't elevate him from the bottom of the standings, but it did show that the Citroen was still fast and would definitely be a force to be reckoned with. Tylo Himmel continued to dog Bottrell by posting times only marginally slower than the Toyota driver. As a result, the Namibian was still 16 seconds behind Bottrell after three stages, but holding station and clearly biding his time to attack. And so it was still the name of Bottrell topping the standings after Drum Durrick, followed by Tylo Himmel and Ashley Haig-Smith. Haig-Smith had lost some ground to Himmel, but was well clear of fourth-placed Matthew Vasey Lyle. Trot, Kutsir, Verlag, Leek, Kurze and newcomer Van Buurden rounded out the top ten. After a quick tightening of the bolts, it was back to the action. And back to the same two stages they had just visited. Drum Durek was up first, followed by Invenetti. But trouble in Class S2000 saw the second running of Drum Durek cancelled and the crews headed straight for Invenetti, the stage they had just exited. This time, however, the boot was on the other foot as Himmel pipped Bottrell to the post by 1.6 seconds. Weston continued to show significant pace, posting the third fastest time, nudging Haig Smith by nearly six seconds. The leaderboard remained intact, however, though Vasey Lyle lost out to trot by 15 seconds, which influenced those lower down the order. With the rally now running significantly behind schedule, the organisers decided to pull the plug on stage six as well, mainly due to the failing light, which would have had an impact on safety. And so the crews made their way back to Durban for the short 1.4 kilometre sprint at the old drive-in, right below the imposing Moses Mabida Stadium. These sprint stages seldom have an impact on the overall rally result, but they're very popular with the crowds. And it was Tylo Himmel and Avon de Toy in their Toyota Etios that again took top honours on this one. They picked Bottrell and Vasey Lyle by 0 0.0 of a second, with Vasey Lyle coming home 0.4 of a second later. As we said, short, sharp and not much bite to it, yet stage 7 was the final stage of the day, which signalled a chance for the crews to regroup, lick their wounds and prepare for the final onslaught to come. By the time the last tyre had squealed on the super special stage, it was car number 69 Guy Bottrell who one expected at the top of the standings. But a two-minute penalty incurred for clocking in early pushed the youngster down the order into fifth, promoting just about everyone else by one position. So now it was Himmel at the top, followed by Haig Smith, Vasey Lyle and Trot. And so day one of the total rally drew to a close bringing with it heartache for Bottrell, who would have felt that he should have been on top, and joy for Himmel, who suddenly found himself in the lead of the rally. But with nine stages to go, the total was far from over. Dirt, muck and grime becoming a feature? Formula. Day two of the total rally dawned behind rain clouds, painting an ominous picture of what was to come. 
After the carnage experienced by the S2000 crews on day one, everyone was eager to have a smooth day out on the gravel. But it was not to be. Sassel Volkswagen's new youngster, Henk Lantachan, clipped one of the many tunnels on stage nine, effectively blocking the road and putting an end to the stage. So the ominous clouds predicted correctly after all. As a result, day two started not with a 20-kilometer long stage known as Ellingham, but rather with Montevideo. At only seven kilometers in length, it was hardly the challenge that Ellingham offered, but the longer stage was to be run again in the afternoon and would still get its chance to bite. With Bottrell now batting down the order due to his timing issues, day two was clear to see a fight back from the Yato Tool-sponsored Toyota driver. Yet it was Himmel who went fastest through stage nine, flipping Bottrell by two seconds. Quite difficult, it was a difficult stage. Um, but we got through it, uh, we took four seconds of Ashley, so we're leading by, I believe it's 3-5 now. So the rest of the day, we'll just take it easy and get through the day and hopefully win the rally. Weston came through third fastest in the little Citroen C2, but he was running so far down the order, it hardly mattered, even though it was encouraging to see him find some pace. Haig Smith in the Castrol Ford Fiesta posted a time that was 3.6 seconds slower than Himmel and 4 seconds quicker than that of Verlach in her Volkswagen Polo. Things were about to change, however, as the crews tackled stages 10 and 11, known respectively as Esperanza and Izonti. Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle had a lot of work to do, and the pair set about making up for their penalty of the previous day in a carefully controlled manner. On stage 10, they took eight seconds from Himmel and gained a further four on stage 11. This pushed them up from sixth overnight to third, with just Ashley Haig Smith between them and Himmel. Himmel and Haig Smith traded second and third places on these two stages as first Himmel and then Haig Smith went second fastest behind Bottrell. In the meantime, defending champion Trot had been quietly making up time. And while Vasey Lyle still maintained fourth, it was now clear that Trot had designs on the podium. Not that Vasey Lyle was about to hand it to the team total driver on a plate. The youngster battled hard to keep Trot behind him, and he still had a 20-second margin in his favour. So, here's how the crew stacked up after stage 11 of the total rally. Newcomers Tylo Himmel and Armand de Toy in their brand spanking new Toyota Etios were on top of the pile. Thanks in large to Bottrell's penalty from day one. Haig Smith and navigator Craig Parry occupied second, some 36 seconds behind Himmel, who was driving like a man who could smell a maiden victory. And then, just a further 30 seconds back, was the man on a mission. Guy Bottrell had clearly not given up hope just yet and was about to launch his final salvo of attacks. Behind the trio at the top were Basie Lyle, Trot, Villarc, Leek, Kurze and VW driver Chad van Buurden with Henry Dearlove beside him. Stage 12 was the second running of Ellingham, the 21 kilometer stage that had been cancelled earlier in the day. This is one of the rally's toughest stages and was a great place for Bottrell to continue his assault on the top step of the podium. But it wasn't to be. The Runnicks came through three seconds slower than the Etios, leaving Himmel safely at the head of the field. The same can't be said for Vasey Lyle, however. He posted only the fifth fastest time on the stage, handing Bottrell third place in the process. So now it was Himmel from Haig Smith from Bottrell, with Trot sniffing at the podium in fourth place. And it was a similar scenario on stage 13. Bottrell, however, went fastest, pipping newcomer Richard Leake in a Ford Fiesta R2 by six seconds. He also took eight from Himmel, nine from Trot, and a telling 20 seconds from second placed Haig Smith. Second was becoming a very strong possibility for Bottrell, with a win not entirely out of the question. The action was heating up as the rally headed towards its conclusion. After stage 13, it was off to Scottborough for a quick visit to the Dunlop service park. This was the last proper service before the final two gravel stages of the rally and the crews could all but taste the finish. For Bottrell, this was the last roll of the dice. He either had to push or settle for second. And did he ever push? 
Bottrell launched his Yato Tools Toyota Runex into the penultimate gravel stage with such vigor that he nearly caught some of the S2000 machines. His time of 12 minutes, 17.3 seconds, was 25 seconds faster than Craig Trott and a full 30 seconds quicker than that of Tylo Himmel. The gap between Himmel and Bottrell was now down to 53 seconds, with just the 8-kilometer long Isonti stage left to make up time. Bottrell's effort was enormous, but maybe not quite enough to grab the win. Bottrell outpushed himself somewhat in stage 15 and managed to grab only four more seconds from Himmel and relinquishing a handful of time to Trot and Haig Smith in the process. Not enough, however, to make either of them catch up overall. And so the victory all but slipped away from Bottrell, despite an heroic effort to make up for his penalty of day one. This had been one of the most captivating battles in a long time and it was quickly clear that Himmel and Bottrell was sure to butt heads many times in the remainder of the season. It was all over bar the shouting and 1.4 kilometer of tarmac back in Durban. It was Clint Weston who went fastest here, followed by Haig Smith, Himmel, Trott, Van Buurden, Vasey Lyle and Bottrell. But once again, these short stages have very little impact on the outcome of a rally, unless someone does something stupid. But this time, there was none of that. And so, after two days of grueling running, it was all over. In the end, Ashley Haig-Smith came home in third place, finishing only 20 seconds behind second-placed Bottrell. No, it was a good event, um, a lot of learning curves. We could have had a, a bit of event and we had some, if we sorted out the issues outside the car and inside the car with myself. So, it's me more being, I must be more confident and committed. Bottrell, in turn, finished 50 seconds down on Tylo Himmel leaving the youngster to ponder what could have been had he not received that two-minute penalty on day one. I thought we could only get to third, but uh, you know we pushed really hard and got to second, so uh, we're happy with the result. The car's going well, it was reliable, never missed a beat, there's not a scratch on the car, so we, uh, we're happy with the result. But the top step of the podium went to a deserving Tylo Himmel, who claimed his maiden victory in Class S1600 and also handed the brand new Toyota Etios R2 a victory on its first outing. The champagne must have tasted very sweet to the young Namibian, and with very good reason. Yeah, we had a very, very fantastic weekend. Um, first of all, it's great for the team. Um, I just want to say thanks to Gemsport who built the car. They did an excellent job. It's a good base model. Um, we still have to do some development on it. Next on the rally calendar is the spectacular Sassel Rally, which takes place on the 18th and 19th of April around the Lofeld towns of Sabi and White River. We'll see you there. The grit, dust and determination seen on the Total Rally was brought to you by Motorsport South Africa in partnership with Ford, Toyota, Volkswagen and Sassol.